What's going on, everybody? It's your boy Valerio White checking back in. I go by V for short. And in this video, we're going to be building a serverless microservice architecture right on AWS. All right. I'm excited for this one. So let's get into it. And as a quick note, before we actually dive into the video, I actually want to mention that down in the description box, I pasted my GitHub links. And in this GitHub link, it involves the entire process step by step of this lab that we're going to do here in this video so go over to my github link and you can see step by step the entire lab all right, all right perfect so here on the screen we have our serverless microservice architecture and essentially it's really a serverless api architecture okay so if we read it from left to right you'll notice that we have a client and that client is going to evoke a rest api through our api gateway the api gateway will then trigger a Lambda function. And in our Lambda function, we're going to embed it with code, Python code to be exact. And that code will allow the Lambda function to perform crude operations in DynamoDB. And for those of you who are unaware what crude stands for, it's an acronym for create, read, update, and delete. Okay. So Lambda will have the ability to perform crude operations into DynamoDB. And that is essentially our simple serverless microservice architecture, API architecture that is, that we're gonna be creating. Now, in order for us to build this simple architecture, what we're gonna do, we're gonna reverse engineer it and we're gonna work from the end all the way into the beginning. So we're gonna start by building our Amazon DynamoDB, then we're gonna build our AWS Lambda, then we're gonna build the A Amazon API Gateway, and lastly, we're going to go to postman.com, which is going to allow us to test our API call to send it through uh, the serverless architecture to see if we actually can send a crude operation to update our DynamoDB table. Step one is creating our DynamoDB table. So go ahead and make your way to AWS, log into your account, and then go to the DynamoDB console. I have mine here, so I click on that. Once you're at the DynamoDB console, the next thing you wanna do is click Create Table. So you're gonna click on that. The table name, we're going to name this one API Gateway dash Lambda dash crude. Okay. For the partition key, we're just going to put ID for that, leave the type as string, and everything else we're going to keep as default. All right. So just scroll to the bottom and click create table. All right. So as you can see, the table is currently in the creating status. It may take a couple seconds for it to switch from creating to active status. So I'll be right back once it's done. All right, perfect. So our table has been successfully created. As you can see, it has switched to the active status and we have completed step number one. All right, so here's step number two. And step number two, we have to create our Lambda IM role. And this step is very important because we wanna make sure that our Lambda function has the permission to access our DynamoDB table, right? And the type of access that our Lambda function needs, it needs access to create in our, our, our DynamoDB table, read, update, and delete in our DynamoDB table, okay? And so that's what we do here uh, when we create this role. So ahead and make your way to the identity and access management console as you see on the screen here once you go here on the left hand side you're going to click on policies all right and once you click on policies i want you to click the button to the right hand side create policy all right so if you go to that github link in the description i've already uh created a json for the permissions needed for our Lambda function. So go ahead and copy it on that GitHub link and we can paste it here. I've already had, I already have it copied, so I'm gonna paste it. All right, to quickly go over the permissions that we are going to give our Lambda function, I'm gonna highlight everything that says DynamoDB. So essentially we're giving our Lambda function the permission to put item, delete item, get item, uh, scan, query, and update item all in our DynamoDB, okay? In addition to that, this is optional. It is not needed, but we also gave uh, permission for our Lambda function to access CloudWatch logs so that we can just keep track of any updates that um, we're doing on behalf of our DynamoDB. Our Lambda function can automatically update CloudWatch logs as well. So we can create log stream as well as put log events and create log groups, all right? So let's go ahead and click next. We're not going to add any tags, so we can go ahead and click next for review. 
And the name that we're going to give, the name that we're going to give our uh, execution role is going to be Lambda API Gateway DynamoDB role. Again, this name really doesn't matter. You can name it whatever you want, but just for consistency with that GitHub uh, README, this is the name we're going to use. And then we're going to click Create Policy. All right, so now the policy has been successfully created and that concludes step number two. All right, so step three is gonna be us creating our Lambda function, all right? So you wanna go ahead and make your way to the AWS Lambda console. Once you're here, click on dashboards and then you'll see at the top right-hand corner, create function, click on that button there. Once you click on that button, there are a couple of things that we're gonna change. So author from scratch, we're gonna keep that the same. Function name, we're going to name it Lambda Crude over HTTPS, okay? Runtime, we're going to change it from Node to Python 3.7. That is going to be the language that we're going to use to code our Lambda uh, function. And then lastly, you want to drop down this permissions, go from create new role to using an existing role. And you want to go ahead and select the role that we just created in our previous step, which is called Lambda API Gateway DynamoDB role. Again, this uh, gives our Lambda the permission to interact with DynamoDB and you know uh, perform those operations, all right? And that's it. Go ahead and click Create Function at the bottom right-hand corner. All right, so once you've successfully created your Lambda function, you'll be prompted to this screen here. All you have to do is scroll down and you'll see they already have a sample uh, test code in here. What you wanna do, you wanna go to that GitHub link in the description, copy and paste the code in step three, and we're gonna paste it in here. So I already have the code copied and I'm going to paste it in here. And once you paste it, make sure you go ahead and click deploy. All right, boom. So successfully updated the function Lambda crude over HTTPS, all right? So let's go ahead and go into the next step. All right, so now we're done with step three, we can go ahead and move on to step four, which is very important. And that is testing the code that we just pasted in here. Now, before we jump right into it, I wanna highlight the most important part of this code, which are the crude operations that this code allows our Lambda function to do. And that's gonna be create, read, update, delete, and echo. Echo is just a test operation that we can use in this test mode right here, okay? so. Let's go ahead and proceed with testing to make sure this code works correctly. In order to test what we're going to test, we're going to test the create uh, operation, that uh, capability that we gave our Lambda function, okay? So you want to go to this test button, click the drop down arrow here, click configure test, okay? Once you click configure test, the event name that we're going to do is create. We're going to test that, we're going to test that create um, capability. And then you want to scroll down. You can leave the uh, template as is. We want to scroll down again in the GitHub link. You'll have this JSON uh, information needed. Okay. Uh, all right. In the GitHub link, you'll have that JSON information needed. So you can just copy and paste it in here. And so essentially what this says is, we're essentially creating an event, right? So picture yourself um, at the beginning of that microservice architecture, right? When the client is evoking an API call to our gateway, that's basically what this is. So the client is invoking an API call and they're requesting to create, right? An item in our Lambda, it's an item in our DynamoDB called API Gateway Lambda Crude. And what they want to create is, um, an ID that has ABC, a number that has five, name that has an entry of Bob, and then age that has an entry of 42. So that's essentially what we're doing right here in this create test, right? So once we are done with uh, uh, copying and pasting that JSON, we want to go ahead and click save. All right. And to go ahead and test it, we can go ahead and click test. And the execution results will come. And you can see we have a code of 200, which means the test successfully 
uh, was created, okay? So that is a good test, all right? So next, we're actually going to go to the DynamoDB table to see this entry because it should be in our DynamoDB table, okay? So let's go to it. All right, so we want to go ahead and validate that that entry was indeed successful. So I went ahead and went to our DynamoDB console. On the left-hand side, I click Tables and then click Export Items. And as you can see, the request that was made was to create um, an ABC entry for ID, a 42 age entry for age, an entry for Bob under name, and an entry for number as five. So we have successfully created this entry, all right? So that, that is a good test. All right, so let's go ahead and make our way to step number five, and that's actually creating our API, uh, RESTful API. Let's get into it. All right, perfect. So now that we're done with step number four and we created our Lambda function, we're going to go ahead and create our RESTful API. So what you'll want to do in uh, AWS, you want to go to the API Gateway Console. Once you're here, you want to scroll down till you see REST API and click uh, the Build button here. So we're going to click on that button. We're going to go ahead and click OK. All right, so choose a protocol. We're going to keep it at REST. Create new API. We're going to switch it from Example to New API. All right, under Settings, we're going to give the API a name. And we're just going to call it Dynamo operations okay excuse my typing <laughs> uh descriptions we're going to leave that blank and then endpoint type we're going to leave it as a regional and then in the bottom right hand corner we're going to click create api all right so that's created so the first thing we want to do i'm going to go ahead and click on that uh that hashtag or that that, that uh, the back line and then click on actions and we got to create a resource so click create resource all right, resource name, we're going to name it the same thing as our API, which is Dynamo Operations. All right, we're going to leave everything default and then click Create Resource. All right. Once we have created our, uh, our resource, we want to go ahead and actually click on Dynamo Operations here. Once we actually click on it, we want to go back up to the Actions button and we want to create a method for our resource. All right. Now, the method that we're going to use in order for the client, when you think about the architectural diagram in the beginning of the video, we want the client to evoke this uh, API, right? So the client is going to do that through an HTTP method, and the method that they're going to use is the post method, okay? So you're going to click post, and then click the check mark. All right, the integration type, we're going to keep it as Lambda, all right? Uh, the Lambda region, whatever region that you're in, I'm in US East 1, so I'm going to leave that the same. And then the Lambda function is the function that we created in the previous step. So let's go ahead and type the name of the function, which is Lambda crude over HTTPS. Uh, we're going to keep the use default timeout, keep that checked, and then click on Save. Click OK. All right, perfect. So we have created our API, all right? Now, the next step, step six is very simple, very easy. And all we have to do is deploy our API that we created, okay? So make sure you're clicking on this post here. Make sure that's highlighted. Uh, go back to the Actions button, hit the drop down, and then click on Deploy API. All right, once you click on Deploy API, you want to go to the Deployment Stage, hit New Stage, and then we're going to give the stage name Production, but P-R-O-D. All right, we're going to leave the stage description as blank, the Deployment description as blank, and then we're going to click Deploy. So now we are deploying our API, all right? And here's the most important part, the URL. So this is not the URL that we need. You want to drop down this uh, prod, and you want to click on post right here. This is the URL that we're going to use, all right? So make sure you go ahead and copy this URL because that is what we're going to use in order to play the client, essentially, in order to evoke our API call, all right? So the next step, we're going to go ahead and go to postman.com. We're going to use this URL and we're going to send a request as if we are the client to evoke this API uh, through this uh, URL endpoint. All right, so let's go ahead and get into the next step. All right, so step number seven. We've made it to the end, ladies and gentlemen. And in this step, we're going to act as the client and submit a request through our API uh, so it can go through the API gateway on AWS that 
AWS uh, API Gateway will then evoke our Lambda function that we created and whatever request we send uh, should update our Dynamo DB table, whether that's update, create, read, or delete, okay? So I've made my way to postman.com. Um, I've already signed in. I'm gonna go ahead and go to my workspaces and then click on my workspace. I'm gonna let that load. Once you click on that, you want to go ahead and go to, uh, let me see, let me see, where is it at? API? Excuse me, new. That's what I'm looking for. Go to new and then click on HTTP request. Click on that. And you want to go ahead and change the HTTP method to post because, again, that's how we created our API. We used the post HTTP method. And we want to go ahead and copy and paste the actual uh, evoke URL that we copied from um, our last step. So I'm gonna go ahead and copy and paste it in here. All right, next thing you wanna do, you wanna change this uh, parameters option to body. And we're gonna change uh, the type of body from none to raw. And this just allows us to input our request via a JSON style, which is what we wanna do in this example. And so, again, what we're going to do, much like we did in the uh, the test event when we created our Lambda function, we're going to create a JSON document. We're going to create an event that evokes the API, and the API will trigger the Lambda to eventually do whatever operation to our DynamoDB table, all right? So in the GitHub, I do have an example uh, operation. So you can go to that, go to uh, step number seven and copy that. So I'm going to go ahead and copy it on my end. And I'm going to go ahead and paste it here. All right. So essentially, this event that we want to uh, submit a request to uh, uh, trigger that API will be a create operation for our DynamoDB table called API Gateway, which we created. And we want, uh, we essentially want the Lambda function to create a new uh, ID entry called ABCD and a new number entry underneath the ID uh, ABCD as 879, okay? So once all that is done, you wanna go ahead and click send, and we should get a 200 code back saying that, that it is successful. And that is what we have here, right? 200 code back that it is successful. Now essentially what we're gonna do, we're gonna verify again, go to our DynamoDB and see, did it actually create this, uh, this event here, all right? So let's go ahead and do that now. All right, perfect. So I made my way back to AWS, clicked on DynamoDB console. And if you click explore items under the table, you can see that we successfully created uh, a new entry in our table, ABCD for the ID and the number is 879. So this concludes the build of our serverless microservice architecture on AWS. Again, we created uh, a DynamoDB table first, and then we created our Lambda function with our IM Lambda role, and then we created our API through API Gateway, and we tested it outside of AWS with Postman to essentially evoke a REST API call through API Gateway, which essentially triggered Lambda, and the Lambda code that we uh, put into the, the that function then created an event in our dynamo db table so again this is a success and the last thing i want to tell you all is make sure you go back and delete everything that was created because this entire lab is free it's in the free tier just make sure that you go ahead and delete everything that was created so that you can stay within the free tier so go back and delete the uh, dynamo db table go back and delete the lambda function and go back and delete the api that was created okay so ladies and gentlemen, we made it all the way through. I appreciate everybody sticking with me from the beginning to end in our quest to build a serverless microservice architecture in AWS, okay? So everybody who stayed, I wanna say thank you. Please like the video, share. And if you all have built this design before or have any questions or pretty much have anything to say to maybe even improve this design, please comment down below. I'm reading all comments and please, please subscribe if this is the type of content that interests you and if you want to see more. Okay. So again, this is Valeria White checking in. I'm now checking out.
I want to say peace and God bless. Y'all take care.